Okay, let's talk a little more about debugging using the JavaScript debugger built into Chrome. Um, I've mentioned in the past that this debugger tool is probably going to be one of the most valuable tools you learn this semester, and it's going to save you a lot of time. So let's talk a little bit more about it. Um, and I've got some code here that is intentionally got errors in it so that we can use the debugger to find them. And let's talk real briefly about the code that I've got here and take a few minutes to just kind of drill into this debugger and uh, see it in action. So I've got a, a very basic program here with one function in it called simple addition. And I've got two numbers, right, that I've got in here, num1 and num2, which I'm using the get element by ID commands to pull data out of the input boxes and save them in there. Then I'm adding those two numbers together, getting the answer, and then spitting them out into an uh, HTML element called output down there, right? Um, and I'm doing some string concatenation on here where I'm taking the first number, adding to it a plus sign. Notice it's in a string quotation marks here. Then adding the second number with concatenation. Notice the difference in color, black versus gray. The grays are strings, right? So I've got a plus and an equal sign both in string. And so if you can envision this in your head, I've got number one plus number two equals the answer, right? And then I've got these black plus marks that are kind of stringing everything together, which are my concatenation operators, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, try to run this. And I've got my code. I think it's great. I come over here and I enter in a couple numbers and I hit my button and nothing happens, right? It's going to happen to us. So first thing you've got to remember to do is, you know what, drill immediately into that debugger. And whoa, look at that. Just in a few clicks, I've already got a ton of errors. And so I'm going to go to my sources tab. I'm going to make sure that my um, program is selected. And then if you want to, you can hide this navigator to give yourself a little bit more space. And you already see some stuff going on in here. But the first thing I'm going to do is refresh this. Because the first thing I want to make sure I don't have are uh, errors that happen on load, right? And I do. Um, when I first refresh this page, right? I notice that I have an error on line 17 that says unexpected end of input. And that usually means that the JavaScript got to that line and it was expecting something to happen and it didn't. So on line 17, this is our final output. There's nothing between our final output and our script tag. And that should be my first clue because usually, right, we've got that end of curly brace. And if I come up here and I click on that curly brace, notice there's no thing. And so just by experience, you're going to learn that, okay, I need that there, right? It's things to look for as you get good at this, right? So that's the very first thing that's got to be fixed is my function is not going to work if I don't have that opening and closing curly brace. So once I've fixed that, I save it. You can look up here, notice that when you make changes, you know, when you save it, it goes blue. When you have changes, it goes red, right? Um, up there in our notepad plus plus but now that I've saved it I'm gonna reload it over here in Chrome and notice my error goes away awesome so now I'm feeling better about my code I put in some numbers I hit calculate ah more errors right this time I got an error on line 26 it tells me there's a that simple addition is not defined well that's weird because I know I've defined that function so already I'm frustrated so I'm gonna look a little bit more closely at what I've got on line 26 I've got line 26, my on click that says it's calling simple addition, right? But one thing I know in um, Notepad++ is that when I highlight something, right? Notice that other things, when I highlight a word, all the other words in my program get um, highlighted as well. And when I click on simple addition, this one doesn't get highlighted. So something isn't the same. And so as I drill in and I look closer, I see that I'm missing my E in here on simple addition. And you can notice down here, same, th same thing. Simple addition is not defined. And that's true because this is what it was defined. This does not exist. So once I save that, notice now that I highlight it, they both get highlighted. I can feel confident that I fixed that. And let's go ahead and refresh again. Now we're going to add those again. And oh my goodness, I've still got more errors. But it's a new error this time, right? Now I'm on line 12, and it's telling me that it cannot read the property value of null. Well, what does that mean? Let's look at line 12 and see what we've got going on. I've got num1, right? Var num1, that looks good, equals document.getElementById. And I've got an ID in parentheses dot value. Now all of that looks good. Some common mistakes there, some uh, capitalization problems with get element by ID, but the E, the B, and the I are all capitalized. So everything looks good. 
And so typically what happens when everything looks good is I've probably got my ID wrong in here. So I am looking for what is the ID I need? Well, I'm trying to pull in this input box, the data out of it, and save it into this variable. So I need to find that input box, which is this first one down here, and look for what its ID is. Oh, look at that. Its ID is num1 input. I have num1 up there, completely different. How did I make that mistake? I don't know. Let's go ahead and make that change, right? Now we're going to save it once again. Oh, wrong screen. Let's save this once again. Reload. Try again. And now I've still got an error in here. On, oh, look at that. Line 13. Same error. Um, and I'm noticing here, oh, I did it twice. Darn it. How did I do that? Let's fix that. Okay. So I save that. Come in here, refresh. And so this is kind of a, a pattern you're noticing here as you work through your code. Now, preferably, you are kind of got your debugger open while you're writing your code. And as you add each piece, you notice earlier, right, that, that you've made errors before you move on. And typically, you don't want to write the whole program, then debug, right? You want to debug as you go. All right, now I'm getting an answer. It's going all the way through, and I got an answer. Great, right? But I look at my answer, and I'm noticing 4 plus 2 does not equal 42. Well, that's weird. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Um, so, but the program is running. It's completing. There are no more errors. So at this point, I'm like, you know what? I need to click in, and I want to watch what's going on. So I'm going to add one of those breakpoints we've talked about. And I'm going to hit the button again, let the code pause, and start walking through it until I see something that kind of catches my eye. Well, I've got a 4 there and a 2 there. That looks normal. But it's telling me answer is 42. Why is answer 42? Well, as you've learned, right, if you look over here, we know that if it's got quotation marks around it, it's a string. So if 4 and a 2 are strings, this plus sign is not going to be an addition. It's going to be a concatenation. So it's just adding my 4 and my 2 together as a concatenation. Notice, and it ends up with 42. You know, you do one of your, uh, oh my goodness, how did I make that mistake? I know that I need these are supposed to be numbers. And I've learned that the best way to convert my inputs into numbers is to put a parse float around that input as I'm gathering it in. There's a couple ways to do it, right? That's that's one right there. The other one, I can come down here in this point and say num2 equals parse float num2, right? There's just a couple of approaches you can take. They both do the same thing. I got a capital L in there. All right, now let's go ahead and save this. Reload over here. Now let's try again. I've still got my breakpoint in there, so I might as well just kind of step through. Oh, look at that. It's a blue number going on in there. Oh, that's still a two. Oh wait, I haven't run 14 yet. So run 14, notice the two gets converted. Now as I slip through, we look for answer. Answer equals five. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, we continue through the debugger and then three plus two equals five. And now my code is working. Everything is as expected. And I use the debugger to, in a relatively quick amount of time, figure out exactly what it was I was doing wrong.